Hey guys and welcome to episode 82. It's been a long road but we're finally at a point where we can start putting some paint on uh, TACOM's Longbow Apache. Guys, you'll recall that in the last video we added the last of the, uh, the fine interior detail, the engines. And in this video we'll be going from this to this. But first, a word from the sponsor. Folks, as you know, this build is generously sponsored by Supernova Studio here in South Africa. And uh, you can order this Longbow Apache kit at a special discount price. If you stick around for the end of this video, I'll be supplying a promo code. It is also time for March Madness at Supernova Studio and do keep an eye on their website for many of the, uh, the great deals they have at the moment. So, painting the Apache. Guys, this is the reference picture I was, uh, I was aiming at. You can see this is a very worn Apache. And for this, I'll be using uh, AK Generation 3 US Army Halo Drab. Now, uh, you recall I touched on this in uh, way back in video 60. And uh, the options currently for an accurate color is this one from Model Master, which is an enamel paint. The other option is also to use this one from AK Real Colors, this of course being a lacquer paint. That will also give you an, an accurate uh, US Army Hilo Drab. And then this, the, uh, the acrylic color. And this is the one I'll be using uh, because my preference is for acrylic paints. Now first we need to do some masking and uh, especially that open cockpit area I mask with some, uh, some foam uh, cut to shape. There we go, cockpit is fully uh, enclosed and uh, the rest is really done with masking tape. Now this little piece of clear plastic uh, will cover up the, uh, the rotor mast. Don't want to get any paint on that because it's already painted. And uh, then we'll also need to mask a few other things, those rear exhaust vents, as well as the open avionics bays. This is the primer I'll be using, primer being a very uh, important part of any paint job. And uh, this is now evenly applied to the model. See, I'll be using my Supernova Studio Ninja Airbrush as I'll be doing area coverage. And this is a job that the, uh, the Ninja is very much uh, suited for. So next up, pre-shading, uh, solid black and solid white. And uh, this is such an important step, guys. Uh, when I was a novice model, I always wondered how these uh, master modelers were able to get these absolutely immaculate paint jobs uh, on their aircraft models. And really, this is what they did. And uh, once I discovered this technique, it opened up a whole new world uh, of possibility for me. So there we go. The Apache has been pre-shaded. Took a while, took me about two days, but uh, well worth the effort. Another trick, guys, I can show you is uh, to use coffee filter paper. Uh, to lightly sand the surface. Now this will not remove any of the paint, but it will give the model a very nice uh, smooth uh, uh, surface texture. Sometimes after you've applied your paint coat, there's some uh, surface uh, roughness, and this will uh, gently remove that. Now onto the base color, US Army Hilo Drab, Federal Standard 34031. That is the accurate color for US Army uh, helicopters. I'll be applying this again with my Supernova Studio uh, Ninja Airbrush. Now guys, uh, a discovery, I don't have AK's thinner, but uh, I found that the uh, Vallejo Airbrush Thinner and uh, Flow Improver uh, reacted really well with this paint and I was able to uh, mix these brands uh, for this specific paint job. So there we go, this goes into the airbrush and uh, this is now very carefully applied uh, to the uh, to the model, making sure that I don't uh, cover up that uh, that pre-shading that I took two days to apply. So working this uh, back and forth, gradually building up the color, and uh, stepping back when necessary, just to make sure that uh, I don't miss anything. You can see there's a few light spots there on the tail, as well as uh, the back section there. Those will have to be uh, covered as well. So just a case of going back and uh, applying some more paint to those, uh, those areas. You can rather paint your model in multiple passes than uh, run the risk of uh, laying down too much paint and uh, ruining your, your pre-shading. So there we go, this is the base color applied and this is certainly starting to look like uh, the Apache that I see in my reference pictures. 
very nice color indeed. And you can see there the, uh, the pre-shading we applied, still visible. Now, I really love this reference picture. You can see all sorts of uh, spots where the uh, maintainers patched up the paintwork, and that is something I'd want to uh, replicate next. Now, first, the lighter color. I'll be mixing German camouflage beige from Vallejo with the, uh, with the AK base color, uh, just to make a lighter shade. And uh, again, I had no issues mixing these brands. You can see there's the lighter color, and uh, those will uh, work like highlights. So this is now... Uh, loaded into my Iwata Eclipse airbrush. I'll be doing detail work and you can see they're just laying down very subtle uh, lighter patches of, uh, of this highlight color. So a uh, very subtle uh, effect and they're requiring some uh, precision work with your airbrush. So having done the lighter sections, let's go on to darker sections. I'm going to mix some NATO black with the uh, US Army Hilo Drab color. Just a few drops of that. Again, some uh, thinner and some airbrush improver. And uh, let's check. This is almost the same color. So I think I prefer something a bit darker. So let's add uh, a few more drops of NATO Black. Mix that up properly. Let's check again. Yeah, that's exactly the right color. This will work very well. So again, using my Iwata Eclipse airbrush, I'm going to apply this in uh, random spots on the, uh, on the fuselage just to replicate those, uh, those patches that I see in my reference picture. Spots where uh, maintainers uh, fix the paint job. So there we go, guys. This is the two sides. Certainly happy with that. And uh, I think we're well on our way to replicating that very patched and worn paint job that I see in my reference picture. At this point, it's a good idea just uh, to give this another rub down with uh, the coffee filter paper. Just make sure that we've got a completely smooth surface. And guys, that's actually quite important, especially because we're going to be applying a gloss uh, varnish next. Now, uh, it's time for decals as well. And there's quite a list of decals uh, for, the, uh, for the Longbow Apache. This can be found in the instructions. You can see there the both. The, uh, the bottom, the top, and the two sides, indicated by numbers. Now, in order to apply this to the, uh, to the model, we'll need a gloss coat. And a while ago, I ordered this bottle of varnish for a craft project that uh, my wife will be doing. But uh, Lindy, the owner at Supernova Studio, informed me that this works really well for scale models as well. Now, just to give you an idea, there's quite a few different glosses that I use. This one being from Microscale. This has always been my go-to uh, gloss coat. We've got the, uh, the premium uh, airbrush uh, varnish from Vallejo, also a good one. On the enamel side, some of you might know this, clear gloss varnish from Humbrol. And then the big boy, this one. And uh, guys, I was really surprised by this. This is an artist varnish. It's meant for craft projects. But uh, this works really well for modeling applications as well. This goes straight into your airbrush. No need to, to thin this down, which is a great uh, feature. And uh, what I really love is how thin this goes on. You'll have no issues applying three or four coats of this stuff to your model. So uh, definitely something uh, to keep in mind. For some of the novice modelers, if you want to apply decals, you'll need some paper towel, a tray for the cut decals, a pair of scissors, some, uh, some cotton buds, and then your decal solutions. Now, I like these from Microscale. The setting solution is Microset, and then the decal softener is Microsol, and these two are very important in, uh, in applying decals on my bench. You also need a tub of uh, lukewarm water. So, let's get started. Now, while these decals are very nicely printed, um, I suspect that uh, Tacom did perhaps take a shortcut because these are quite troublesome. They are very thick and uh, after applying them, I found that they do tend to silver a little bit. Fortunately, they do react well to uh, micro sole uh, if you apply a lot of that. So be aware of that. Uh, you'll need plenty of uh, decal softener and make sure that you follow the uh, correct procedure. Uh, in applying these decals. So they can see there's one of them and uh, then this will require a lot of uh, micro sol to be applied to get those uh, decals to settle down. 
So uh, initially when I saw this, I was a bit horrified. You can see there's some silvering there, not the uh, usual way that good uh, decals uh, react. But uh, I found that 30 to 45 minutes after I applied a lot of microsol, uh, I did get a decent uh, result with these decals. And uh, you can see there, that's a lot better. So uh, they do eventually react to uh, microsol. Now there are some, uh, some troublesome spots like these uh, stripes on top of the, uh, the engines and uh, those will have to be dealt with. Fortunately, in this case, uh, reality uh, worked in my advantage. You'll see in reference pictures that these markings are very subdued, very light, and uh, I'll be doing the same. I'll be using the base color again, and uh, very carefully, very lightly, just mist these decals with uh, my airbrush, just to uh, blend them into the base color a little bit more. And you can see there, that already uh, helps a lot just to hide those uh, imperfections in the decals. Next up, a wash. I'll be using uh, Mick Productions Dark Wash, and uh, this is thinned down with odorless thinner. Now, there's not a lot of uh, recessed panel lines on, the, on this Apache kit, but there are a, uh, a lot of um, uh, raised rivets, and uh, those we'll uh, be uh, tackling next. Of course, the, the excess wash is easily removed with some paper towel and a little bit of uh, uh, odorless thinner. And uh, having done this, we can now remove all these masks and uh, reveal the, uh, the painted detail. So there we go, guys. That is the decals applied. And uh, this is now ready for the next step. Just to dull this down, I'm gonna use ultra matte varnish, again from Vallejo. And uh, this really does a great job in uh, just uh, getting back that matte finish that uh, we see in our reference pictures. You might have to apply one or two of these coats. The, uh, the open panels can be glued in place. Guys, that is the result. After quite a few uh, weeks of work, um, I'm loving this finish and also loving the paint job. So uh, we're not done yet as uh, I still need to uh, bring out those rivets, the raised detail. For that, I'm going to use German camouflage beige, uh, as well as uh, my Vallejo dry brush. And I will now gently dry brush some of this color onto, uh, onto the raised rivets, so the, the raised detail on this model. And you can see that in this case, this, re this worked really well uh, just to bring out uh, all that raised de detail, especially uh, on the tail, all those uh, rivets you see there. So guys, that's it. That is the, uh, the paint job done. And again, I'm very happy with this. This uh, really exceeded my expectations. Of course, we're not done with uh, this build just yet. There's a uh, few small details that still has to be added to the, uh, the Apache. And of course, then we have the, uh, the diorama portion of this build, so uh, do stay tuned for that in future videos. Now, folks, this is such a nice kit and really it, uh, it should be in your stash. If you use the promo code LONGBOW2601, you'll get a 15% discount at Supernova Studio on this kit. And uh, do make sure to order yours straight away because uh, stocks are limited. I think there's three of them left. And uh, do make use of this opportunity. So that's it then for video 82. Thank you for joining me. As always, uh, follow me on Instagram. I do uh, frequent updates there on all my builds. And uh, you're guaranteed not to miss a single thing. Thank you for watching.